Please be sure to check out parts 1 and 2 of this video series as we look at the setup for streamer and nymphing your woolly buggers. Another opportunity to fish your double woolly bugger setup is a nice natural seam and a bit of a bit of a shelf at the head and just a nice perfect seam between fast water the main current and water coming out of this backwater. It's a perfect little V. It's about three, three and a half, maybe four feet at tops in depth. And we're gonna stick with the same setup. Okay, you got your woolly bugger, you got your swivel, you got your second woolly bugger. And now we're going to just have your indicator total of about three and a half feet from the bottom fly. This is a perfect opportunity to tight line nymph these two woolly buggers together. And if you're not familiar with tight line nymphing, it's essentially just cast. You don't want to overextend your rod. You just want to allow everything to get onto the water, lay out, keep your rod up, and you're going to keep this indicator. You're going to use that as a sighter. If you look at the tight line nymphing setups, this is not exactly what the purists would want you to use. There's all sorts of wonderful information and gear and, and tactical gear specific to tight line nymphing. But we're going to use that simple indicator tool as our cider and we're going to keep our rod high so this cider is about six or eight inches off of the water and the idea is we're going to feel the weight of the woolly bugger as it drifts through the water. At the same time we can also see this cider if it goes down we can see the take or we can feel the take of the woolly buggers uh, as it drifts through the seam. Now with this, I'm going to just take my fingers and pull out the fibers, quite a few of the fibers of the woolly buggers to make them more slender. Because what happens is with those big hackle and the marabou tail, those parachute and inhibit those woolly buggers from dropping quickly. We're just gonna do short lines, maybe a, uh, again, we still have that nine foot leader, so it's not too technical. And I'm just gonna get out, I'm gonna work my way kind of in a, in a six foot wide berth of water, just to the left, through the heart, and just outside of that seam. And I'm just gonna work my way upstream with short casts, feel, roll, short casts, feel, roll. And we're just gonna work our way slowly up this seam and hopefully we can catch something on this setup. All right, so now we finished nymphing this backwater with fingers. All I'm going to do is again take off that quick plastic plug on the strike indicator tool, put that away real quick, and now I am just going to, just like we started, and cast up and fast strip and retrieve, vary my retrieve, vary my depth by letting it sinking longer trying different pulses and different retrieves and just see if I can uh, elicit a strike. There's all sorts of holding water for fish. Every single one of these seams and fingers of water comes in across that gravel uh, bar and drops off and there's a perfect little seam. Fish could be sitting on either side or nosed in or downstream of it. All sorts of potential for fish. Off the main flow of the main river quite often you'll have backwaters that are connected by little fingers of current across a gravel shelf and into the trough. You'll want to fish this with a straight streamer setup with your two woolly buggers and just take three, four, maybe five casts at each finger, casting across or into the heart of the finger current seam, letting it sink two, three, four seconds, depending on which part. If you're into the deeper water, the slower water, let it sink a little bit longer vary your retrieve. All you're trying to do is elicit a response from the fish and prospect the water before moving on to the next most likely spot. Ooh. 
So big, deep, slow bits of river are hard to fish. The best you can do is ditch the indicator and just fish along the drop off along the shoreline without an indicator and just have it go deeper. You may need to add a split shot to get deeper, but that's just the reality of these big pieces of water. The great news is at the top end of almost every deep, slow piece of water is an inflow of riffled water with drop-offs and troughs, gravel bars and broken rock. And as you see, there's all sorts of birds up there, which means there's likely lots of insects. And those fish are just nosed in. And you can use your streamer setup to get a quick strike, or you can dead drift your woolly buggers and just work the edges and the troughs. And chances are pretty good you're gonna pick up a trout or two. One final common water type is found in a shelving riffle. The lower main run can easily be fished streamer style or nymphed upstream. As you come to the color change from green or blue to brown and the associated depth change, you can try nymphing under an indicator or tight line, then streamer fish your way back downstream through the run with your woolly buggers. There are a lot of different locations in a river that you can work woolly buggers effectively and move trout even on the slowest of days. Vary your presentation and style based on breaking a river down as we've shared here. And please only look at this video as a starting point to what you can do. Add split shot, be more or less aggressive, mix a woolly bugger with a San Juan worm or other common nymphs and just see what happens. Pay attention to the conditions you're fishing for future reference.